My name's Zadok Johnson, and I'm a jungle missionary. Uh, years ago, as a boy, I was like, man, I just can't wait to go to the jungle. <laughs> and so I think part of my story is destiny unfolding, uh, but at the same time, it's it's God. And there's this like surrender moment that happened in my life years ago, where I just realized like, I can't keep living for myself. I have to live this life out for Jesus, which looks like for me, going to foreign nations and sharing the good news of Jesus and giving a cup of cold water or emergency medicine or uh, life-saving skills in his name. Yeah. And I think that's the in his name part changed when I gave him my life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I'm Claire Johnson and ever since I was young, I knew that God had called me to be a missionary and to be different and do something different than what I saw any of my peers doing. And yeah, like Zadok said, when I gave God my life and I said, it's no longer I who live, like I'm living on behalf of something, someone greater than me. So when I just really gave him everything and said, God, like you can have it all. Like my life isn't worth anything to myself. And so before we got married, uh, Zadok was overseas um, as a missionary. I was overseas as a missionary. And I had people ask me, they're like, like unbelievers, like, why aren't you married? Like, why aren't you dating anyone? I was said, I'm not marrying anyone that doesn't line up with the vision that God's put over my life. And then, you know, surprise to me, there was a Zadok out there, which I didn't think existed. And so when we first met, I think the first time, like our story is miraculous of how we met, but I think when we realized like, okay, we're gonna get married, in that first conversation, like the first few days, we're like, yeah. why don't we go to Burma this fall? And so we didn't end up going to Burma that fall, but we're going the next year. So we ended up running, so we run a youth training, um, training young people, young men and young women to be high-risk missionaries and to give that cup of cool water in his name while having life-saving skills and having the grit. And for me, I'm super passionate about women becoming courageous women of God. And so, yeah, we knew as soon as we got married, like our marriage is going to look different. Our life is gonna be different. Mm -hmm. Our future family is gonna be different because we're gonna to choose to live on mission for God. I think for m me, you know, I, like I was, I was a street evangelist for years here in the States and just sharing the gospel with everyone everywhere, gas stations and Walmart. And, and I think like uh, living on mission for Jesus is like all of our life calling inside of Christ. Um, but f what it's turned into for you and me both mm -hmm. and our family is the foreign field and jungle missions and going where no one else either can or, or maybe wouldn't due to the, the comforts of life. Yeah, before we met, uh, Zadok was on the foreign field and the Lord called him back and said, I need you to come and help raise up the next generation for like seven years. You've been trained over 700 youth in high-risk missions. And then as soon as we got married, we started a young women's division because we've just been doing young men. So that's kind of where we've been recently, our like mission field, so to speak. And now that's kind of coming to a sort of close as we head overseas. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, kind of like- definitely like a full circle picture in the Lord where, yeah, Claire was a jungle missionary and uh, flying in on a chopper, helping rescue people. And uh, I was, yeah, and previously in, in some wild countries and, yeah. uh, and then- Preaching in like what? Yeah, Buddhist Yeah, Buddhist and, temples yeah. and been in mosques and just loving people for Jesus. I had someone ask me, they're like, they told me, they're like, you have the courage gene. You must have the courage gene, like you were born different, you have this courage gene, to be able to go overseas and things like that. And I said, no, I just realized how much Jesus did for me, and so how could I continue to gatekeep this? And so throughout my life, I started making incremental choices of laying down my life and dying to myself and going, okay, God, use my life. Like you can do whatever you want with my life. And with missions, I read in the Bible and people always, I feel like are talking about how, well, I don't know what God's called me to do, but I read the scripture and says, go, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when I read that, I was like, okay, God's already given me a command. I know to do this as I'm operating in his peace and in his presence, I'm supposed to go because the
the salvation and the freedom that I've been given isn't for me to keep for myself. And I know I some people like, we are so blessed to be born in the US to where we have that privilege and that upbringing to be able to now, we can be sent to other nations because we have that ability and that blessing and that privilege. And why would we just continue to one, to gatekeep our salvation? Like Jesus died for them. He died for all of those overseas. He died for me, he died for you. And how could I continue to just keep that to myself selfishly? Because Jesus is worth it. And so for me, my heart for missions is to go to the places that are hardest, the places that are darkest and bring the light of Jesus, bring salvation, bring the hope that's within me. Because I've been hopeless, I've been depressed, I've been, you know, suicidal and I realized like, I can't keep that to myself. Whether that's living, like my heart for missions is living on mission constantly, not just overseas. Amen. Whether that's Walmart, the laundromat, I've seen God to pray and lead people to the Lord in the laundromat, see healings, people at Walmart. Walmart is ripe for the harvest, everyone. If you're not going overseas, you can go to Walmart because it is ripe for harvest at Walmart and there's so many people everywhere. So the thing I'm so passionate about with mission, missions is living a life on mission for God, no matter where you're at and being faithful where you're at. And I'm just so ready and hungry and excited to see the gospel go forth to the ends of the earth and see every tribe and every nation not only get to just hear about Jesus, but experience what relationship with Jesus looks like. That authentic, true connection that God designed us for, that intimate relationship with Him and being able to also just go overseas and use the skills that we have and bring a cup of cool water in His name. Like actually being able to provide help and aid, like medicine and things like that to people that don't have what we have and be able to go, hey, this is in the name of Jesus. Because there's so many humanitarian organizations who do good things, but it's not in Jesus' name. And at the end of the day, we can help people, but if they're going to hell at the end of the day, is it really worth it? And so, yeah, salvation, like bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth is what our, my heart is for missions, what our heart is for missions, is seeing Jesus' name made high, lifted high, and his name be made great. And you know, he said that greater things we are going to see. So, um, yeah, healing, signs, wonders, salvations, all of it. So excited. Jesus said to go and teach people to do all that I've commanded you. And I, I just think of like our lives and how much in the West here we're so blessed to have like teachers of the gospel and like it's not hard to find a Bible and it's not hard to, to get biblical curriculum and then overseas and especially the location where we're going like uh, I just in my own soul it's like oh man if only they had what I had access to mm -hmm. and to be able to teach people authentic relationship with Jesus and yeah. hearing God's voice every day and my sheep will hear my voice and they won't listen to the stranger and like that's what burns in my heart mm -hmm. and um, and not just to go and make a confessor of the Lord but go and make like powerhouse believers that are like ready to bring the kingdom of heaven at hand to mm -hmm. earth. And um, yeah, so I think that's like, that's what burns in my heart is that uh, we would be able to go and, and bring the love of Jesus and bring like who he is yeah. uh, as a transforming savior. Um, to behold the Lamb of God who's taking away the sins of the world. One thing is that they would become radical torchbearers, that when we go, and my heart for missions is that people, when you experience God, when you have a meeting with God, you're forever changed. Mm -hmm. And that's my heart, is that people would have a meeting with God. This is God, who, you know, died for me. And so how could I not live for Him? So one of my life songs since I was young was about how we will go to the hardest and the darkest. And we will go like, here we are, send us God from Isaiah. And that's the heartbeat of our soul mm -hmm. is here we are, God, send us. We'll go to the hardest and the darkest. We don't care what it looks like because we're going because you want us to go. We don't ask if it's safe. Mm -hmm. We ask God, do you want us to be there? So our next mission assignment came to us from the Lord very divinely. Yes. <laughs> um, we honestly, we went up to Alaska, got a little cabin and we're just up there praying, just seeking the Lord on what 
this next year and season of our life would look like as a married couple. And uh, through a really divine set of circumstances, God has opened up the door for Claire and I to go be the deputy of staff at the Jungle Discipleship School, which is starting in the country of Burma inside of a war zone. Um, this is raw jungle, never been, there's never been a school there. Like it's just jungle. And so we'll be in hammocks for the first two months, um, training up the locals in the gospel and war zone aid and combat emergency medicine and uh, predominantly how to hear God's voice and how to be one of his. Um, so yeah, we are excited and it's yeah. wild. So we're going there for an initial of about 10 months because that's the school year. And there's going to be a variety of like ethnics coming. Um, some that have like Buddhist background or are still kind of currently Buddhist knowing they're coming. The guy said like, you can come, but you have to know you're giving 10 months of your life to Jesus. And so it's pretty <laughs> clear to see that God's going to get a hold of them in 10 months. And so it's really the whole goal is relationship with Jesus, not a religious system, because missionaries have gone into Burma and they've done good work, but there's also been that religious system that's also been brought in. But it's like raw jungle, like all they need is that true authentic relationship with Jesus. And so then during that time, we'll go out for two months to the front lines and we're going to bring medical aid. We're going to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We're going to do village programs, spend a few days in different villages and preach the gospel, pray for people. I'm just believing for like signs and wonders and just like revival to break out across Burma because the goal is these people that come and are taught for 10 months that they would go out into Burma and that they would be the missionaries of Burma, not us. That we would be able to give them the tools to go bring Jesus to the country of Burma that's been in civil war for like 20, no, 76 years, 76 years of like three generations of people that have been running for their lives. So in Burma, our primary focus will be uh, teaching at the Jungle Discipleship School. We will be there initially training up the ethnic people. Um, we'll have initially probably 20 to 30 uh, students that are coming, giving and dedicating their life to find out about Jesus for 10 months. Mm -hmm. But some people are like, oh, so you're just coming back after 10 months. This is our life. And so we will most likely be continuing to go back and continuing to disciple in Burma. I heard a sermon one time that like rocked my world. And he said, so many people are willing to say, oh, I'll die for Christ, but will you live for him? And so in this, we're living for him. And if death happens, death happens. But what I would say is that what I would pass on to the next generation is full send. Like give God everything. Don't hold anything back. Live, don't live the same year over and over. Live your, live a life that people would write books about. And I've always said that is I'm going to live a life that people would write books about, not in a prideful way, but in the sense that, Hey, I was that person that gave God everything. Cause I grew up reading missionary books. I grew up reading, reading crazy radical God stories of different people. And I was like, why can't that be me? And I want to, and what I would say to the next generation is that can be you. Mm -hmm. What would your life look, life look like if you gave God full surrender, if you gave him your full yes? Because living for Christ and living every moment for him, it doesn't matter. We don't have to count on the calendar. Well, I got to make sure I make it to this age. I make it to 70, 80 years old, 100 years old. It's I'm living every moment on purpose for Christ. And whenever that ends, that ends because I'm giving him everything now, here, today and forever and going here. Here I am, God send me. And so I think that's really the concept that we've come with is living out what God's put on our life and living it full send, 100%, not holding back anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, I feel like from my lens to the, to the gospel, uh, biblically, I don't think the gospel even works without a full surrender. It also um, doesn't say the gospel is safe. I don't think God, like yeah. Jesus put a preface in there. Oh, the gospel is safe. No. Yeah. It said it, it will cost you everything. <laughs> yeah. It's in fact, it's not safe. Um, yeah. The gospel is power for those who believe. And, uh, and so believing is adhering to relying on fully trusting in mm -hmm. Jesus. And, and I think that looks like uh, accounting of the cost. And so we've had to have those conversations as a husband and wife, like, hey, we're going to a war zone where they're dropping bombs on villages. Um, 
But the reality is, is there's a scripture that's been a life scripture for me. And it's uh, Jesus where he says, for those who believe in me will never die, for they have passed from death into life. And if we've passed from death into life, what kind of life have we actually received? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not our life anymore that we get to hold on to, say this is mine. Mm-hmm. It's a life that is laid down uh, to the calling over our lives. And for Claire and I, it's the calling to a war zone. But for you, it may be a, a something very uniquely special and different. But the gospel costs. If we were to never come back and let's just say uh, we didn't survive and we get to go to heaven, um, I would want the next generation to know that Jesus said, those who believe in me will never die for they have passed from death into life. And the life that we have stepped into is worth living for, it's worth dying for, it costs everything, it's not safe. and. Uh, and it costs everything regardless of where you live and the mission over your life. So fully give everything to Jesus because he's worth it, he loves you, and uh, he's the king that's high and lifted up. We'd love you guys to follow us in this journey and, uh, and join with us, partner with us as we go and embark for Jesus. Yeah, so keep us in your prayers. And then if you'd like to keep up, follow us with socials and newsletters and things like that, go ahead and check out the links down below.